Hey, what is up, guys? It is a Syrian princess, aka Sarah, and we are back to play more choices today. And today we're going to be kicking it off with Rules of Engagement, Book Two, Chapter Fifteen, and we are listening to a wonderful, wonderful uh, ad right here about you know gardenscapes where you basically just make a garden and nothing else. Wow. I the, I would download this app. There's a wonderful story about, you know, how the garden keeper was secretly a serial killer, but, you know, that'd be kind of cool, how he hides all the bodies under all the nice, like, fountains and shit. That'd be cool. But, you know, this is probably a stupid-ass app, but then again, I don't know. And let's get to this beautiful, beautiful animation on this beautiful, beautiful day. Chapter 15, Under the Surface. Alright, what are we doing? You are now playing as Joey, surrounded by the romantic fireworks of your weekly Friday night date, and you and Elena dine together in a secluded in your own tense orbit. That's so pretty! You better not be thinking about accepting Jefferson's offer. Bitch, what if I am? Seriously, I'm- Okay, uh, before I start, guys, before I start, so Joey got an offer for a, to take on a case by a guy named Jefferson for his company. I guess his company is shady or some shit. So I guess they're up, he, she's upset that they're shady and she doesn't want to take on the case. But the thing is, our firm is going bankrupt. Does it really matter what case you take unless you, uh, as long as you get paid? It doesn't really matter. Like, I don't know about you guys. Like, I'm sorry. Like, does it really matter whether they're guilty or not? You get paid no matter what. Like, your job as a lawyer is to find the truth, not to, like, freaking, like, to prove somebody, you know, that's stupid. I'm not even going to argue about this. It's not completely off the table. Joey, demanding someone like him against, uh, defending someone like him against every value you built your career on. And what's the alternative? Letting the firm fold? You can always rebuild, but you'll n never forgive yourself if you accept a deal to defend on an oil company for an oil spill. I've decided so- I've dedicated so much to this firm, its clients, its employees, and its values. It would be morally wrong to ignore a way to save it. Ta! See? It would be morally wrong to ignore a way to save it. It's not the only way, just the easiest. What's wrong with the easy way out? Like, what's- like, bitch, are you gonna fucking take on cases? Are you gonna fucking pay money for my fucking firm that I built myself? Bitch, you work for me! Oh my god, I'm being so mean to Elena when I've been so nice to her this whole time. I'm so I'm sorry, ladies and gents, but I feel bad for him. You feel a hand clench around your fork. You want me to gamble everything off uh, on the off chance that we find a better way? No, I want you to do what's right. How can you even consider this? Elena, I'm protecting my employees. This will benefit you too. It's only one case. Oh, these are all good options. These are all good options. It's only one case. This will benefit you too. I'm protecting my employees. Uh, these are all good choices. I could have said any of these. Oh, I kind of, I'm leaning toward it's only one case, but I feel like she's going to be like, well, first it's one case, then it's going to lead to another one, blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to be like, I mean, it could benefit her. I'm protecting my employees, which you are one of them. What kind of boss would I be if I could, couldn't take care of my employees? No one signs up to help the the defenseless because they want to reel in the cash. We want it to work for you because we believe in your mission. I would rather sink uh, uh, with our values intact than throw it all away uh, and keep the lights on. I can't let my employees lose their jobs over some uncompromising belief in righteousness. Exactly. See? Joey, listen to yourself. Where's that fiery passion to stand up for the vulnerable? A, mi a few million in debt. Thank you very much. Bitch. Look, once I get this damn money, then oh, then maybe we could talk. You could talk about values, but unless you got a few mil in your pocket, you have no say in what I do with my company that I build. A waitress walks up to you, your table with two glasses of water and a small appetizer plate. Fantastic evening, you two. Here's your water and complimentary appetizer. Tonight our specials are the Love Boat Sushi, Bachelor Burger, and Single Lady Soup. Single Lady Soup. That's funny. Everything sounds good. It's going to be hard to narrow it down to just one entree. I want the sushi. Recommended ordering family style if you'd like to share. We'll share our order. Order separate dishes. We can share. Go sharesies. We want to order separately. Together, like a loving couple that we are. Loving couples sometimes eat separately. Maybe I'm not in the mood for a love boat sushi, dear. You could you could have said so, a dear. I did, dear. <laughs> I'll just bring out a, a little of everything. 
Fine. Fine. Oh my god, you guys sound like an old married couple. It's hilarious. The waitress scurries away and Elena appears morsel more so from the appetizer plate, her knife grating along the plate as she cuts through it. <laughs> what is that about? To prove that you don't always get to make a in la in a lateral decisions. I bet if, if I had said we're separately eating, she'll be like, we're sharing. Just to, like, piss me off. I'm the owner of the firm, so I can do that. Thank you, dude! It's my fucking company! At least talk to everyone else in that firm first. They deserve to know. Hey, you're about to lose your job. How do you feel about that? I'll go, uh, go over while I'm sure. Elena, I love you to death, but you're such a dumbass. As you're talking, Dinesh walks over to your table. Good evening, everyone. I'm sure- oh, sorry for intruding, but I need to make my legally obligated check-in. Well, we're all still in love over here, right? We're having a lovely- uh, sure. A fantastic- number. We're having a lovely- yeah, it couldn't be any better! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no disturbances? Nope. No white lies? <laughs> of course not! No occasional spats? Lover squirrels? Uh, there was that one time. That one awkward night. Ah, uh, couples have fights sometimes. I'd like to say you two are doing wonderfully. I see uh, you together so often I'm starting to feel like a third wheel. It's been no trouble at all. Thanks for checking in. I'll leave you to it. Have a good night. Dennis walks away. Okay, what? It's so weird how, like, he's really trying to prove the relationship. There's a good day, lovers, quarrels. Like, couples fight sometimes, dumbass. See? We're impressioning Dennis, and you'll get that inheritance bunny, and everything will be solved. One wrong move and we lose it all. Elena shakes her head in frustration and takes a deep breath and relaxes. Joey, do you remember how the firm began when we first decided to work together? No, I- it's irrelevant now. I don't care how this fucking firm started. You are willing to throw your job away. You- Oh wow, this is getting bad. It was different then. Oh wow, Jesus Christ. It was why I followed you, Joey. You weren't afraid of doing the right thing. You're inflexible. You'd fall on a sword if it meant saving a squirrel. Ooh! You, oh, we are, uh, are, we are actions, Joey. I'm not letting you justify your bad decisions in the name of some greater good. But isn't that doing the right thing? Greater good? I have a responsibility to fulfill, uh, to fulfill. I'm the one who failed the company, so I'm the one who should pay the price. Not my clients, not my employees, and not you. Who's the one failing on the falling on the sword now? Stop pre pretending you're some righteous observer. That affects you too. This affects you too. Elena throws the the contents of her glass at you. Oh! Dodge, 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 dodge. I'm not gonna let that shit hit me. I'm not taking it. You duck uh, out of the way just in time as the water arches uh, arches over your head and splashes harmlessly into the plates behind you. I can't believe you did that. If you're so willing to sell out, then you're not the man I thought you were. She storms uh, off through a crowd of onlookers who all stare at you. The waitress awkwardly shuffles over to your table with your food. Wow, I can't believe she did that. I'll tell everyone on this staff and we're going to give her some bad service for next week. Uh, you don't need to tell anyone about this. That's really not necessary. She's... She knew I was thirsty. She thought my shirt caught on fire. We... She... Was celebrating our anniversary? Um. I mean, she was mad, so why would celebrating our anniversary have to do anything? She knew I was thirsty. She thought my shirt caught on fire. Celebrating our anniversary? We first met, and then she spilled water on my shirt. Now we have. We do the commemorative anniversary. Uh huh. You know, I may lead the strange encounters, but that shows devotion. Yep, I'm glad she was looking out for me. Would you like a to-go box? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. I'd like a to-go box. Such a pretty sound of the ocean. Oh god, here's the part when we confront Dean. You're not playing as Sarah. While sitting at the bar with Dean, you discovered a text from Dick on his phone. Well, out with it. Sarah, I... Bartender, a round of pina coladas over here, please. Give me a Manhattan fast, please. Straight up, I'm feeling thirsty. Sorry, Sarah, one moment. No, bitch, not one moment. You're gonna tell me right fucking now. He taps his coworkers on the back. 
I need you to cover for me for a few minutes while I take care of something. The co-worker nods and heads over to handle a group of customers and Dean turns back to you. Let's talk somewhere a little more private. Okay, so I don't cause a scene. Dean leads you to the secluded spot on the ship and he walks all the way up to the handrail and grazes over the ocean, taking a deep breath and he faces you. I secretly befriended Dick and T Tanya to try and help you. Why would you befriend them? When I heard about your marriage, I wanted to help, but I didn't have lawyers or royalty behind me. I'm a bartender. I listen to people. I figured I could leverage that and collect some information that could help you. Nicole mentioned that she had heard something strange about you and Tanya. Something about you and her having an understanding. Of sorts. I let her have the impression that I could give some kind of double agent when it came to you. She was surprisingly easy to get op to open up. I got the feeling that she didn't have too many people to confide in. But what about Dick? You punched him. How did you get on his good side? I had to pretend that my feelings faded when I found out you were getting attention from other guys. It was risky and foolish, but I had to do something, anything I could. Dean, I believe you, that's an excuse. Um, I mean, he's still a love interest, so I'm, I'm not- I mean, his story does make sense. Uh, that's an excuse. Uh, you still fucking lied, that's an excuse. You could have- you could be lying to me right now. Sir, I wouldn't lie to you. That's why I came clear now. Good intentions or not, you should have talked to me about it instead of assuming that I, what I wanted. It was wrong for me to do what I did. I realize that now. I'm sorry. I'm still mad at you, but you could try to make it up to me. That's all I can ask for. Thank you, Sarah. You lean against the railing, silence. Dean turns back towards the ocean, and the waves can be heard breaking against the ship. So, did you discover anything? Mostly drunk, drunken ramblings. As in nothing. Not quite. I've seen Tanya and Santana interact with each other, and they're not as tight as a team as you'd think. Tanya doesn't trust her mother. That could be a wedge to exploit if you could be nicer to her. Be nice to Tanya? Maybe never. Uh, I mean, if I can get this shit to be over, maybe. Maybe I'll be nice to her. She's been ruthless, but I can kind of understand why if she has to put up with Aunt Santana all the time. True, if I had a mother like that, I'd probably kill myself. Okay, maybe not kill myself, but like, I would friggin' get pissed off all the time. Ugh. <laughs> I know it's a lot to ask, but I'm glad you see things from her side. Dean shifts his weight into the railing and leans closer to you. But now that everything's out in the open, there's something I've been wanting to show you except for some time. Oh? Well, what is that? It may involve a boat. We're on a boat. How about a chance to swim under the stars? Uh, rest you'll have to find on your own. Not a bad offer. I have a few things to set up. Meet me at the dock in an hour? Okay, this is interesting. Sun begins to set as you walk to the ship's boutique. What would be- what would a water goddess wear? Ooh, that looks cute, but that's so expensive! Uh, why would I wear a dress? Why would I wear a dress if we're gonna get in the boat? Uh... Why can't I- okay, I'm gonna choose it. But then I'm gonna unlock the closet again. Unlock the closet. Okay, outfits? Uh, summer chic bun. Beach day? No, 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 that's still a dress. Okay. Easy breezy, whatever that means. Maybe... Classic Sunday? No, definitely not that. That's a cute jacket. Uh, what is this one? Natural gray. Okay, see, that's something I could jump into the ocean with. It's fine. I could jump into the ocean with that. Um, subtle thing, but I really like how the makeup's done on this MC. This doesn't look very water friendly. I guess I could take it off when we go swimming. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, fine. Time to go. Okay. You disembark and find Dean waiting for you beside a small boat. Ready for an adventure? You know it. Dean helps you under the boat and pushes off from the port. See, he didn't say one thing about my outfit. Oh! 
we interrupt this program to bring you the royal romance beach scene from New York. Later that evening, you though bumps into a secluded beach. We're here. Just give me two seconds to set up. Dean hand heads toward the beach with a picnic basket while you take a warm summer night. All right, Sarah, I'm ready for you. You look and see Dean set up a crackling bonfire, tendrils of flames twirling in the air as to reach the stars. I can't wait to see what's in that picnic basket. Basket. You make your way over to the bonfire. All right, I'm here. Tell me the surprise already. I've been trained to withstand torture, and I've never been given uh, so close to gotten so close to crackling. Must be those doe eyes. Enough stalling. Open it up. Okay. You got one guess before I open it. What's your favorite food? Spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, chipino with raspberry fachia. Baby spinach salad with lemon and sugar crepes? What? Spaghetti and meatballs? I'm Italian. Congratulations, you win a free dinner. Dean pulls out several containers out of the basket and then opens each with exaggerated flair. <laughs> it looks delicious. Did you make it all yourself? Well, it was a team effort. I asked Nicole what your favorite food is, and that kitchen staff helped me put it together. Oh, that's sweet. You place a swirling of freshly made bacini pasta in your mouth and let a light red tomato sauce coat your tongue before trying a piece of savory meatball. After you thoroughly enjoyed your portion and find yourself eyeing the remaining food, debating whether to take a second helping, I may have to let you plan dinner for me more often. Don't fill up too much on that, or you'll have you won't have room for the dessert I brought. Ooh, dessert! Who's, did somebody say dessert? Give it to me. Dean pulls out a bag of marshmallows and a box of graham crackers and a bar of chocolate out of the basket. Ooh, you better put extra chocolate in my s'mores. Smos. They're called s'mores, boys. Schmoes everywhere, guys. S'mores. No bonfires complete without them. Exactly. Here we go. He hands you a pointed stick and a marshmallow, but as you try to slip the marshmallow into the stick, you poke yourself. Ow! Need any help with that? Bruh, I can do this shit myself. I could use some help. Maybe you should kiss it. No, I got it. You try again in time successfully, a marshmallow successfully on the stick. Well, I was with the seals, and we used to get th these care packages filled with chocolate and candies. One time, my buddy said he had a real hunkering for s'mores. But we didn't have marshmallows or graham crackers, so we put pieces of chocolate between two saltines and a, a, a maple syrup. That sounds disgusting and delicious at the same time. Did he eat it? He loved it. Soon I was making some for everyone. Maybe you can make one for me sometime. I'm actually going to try that. I'm going to take chocolate, saltines, and maple syrup and see how it tastes. I'm actually going to tell you guys if it tasted good. As nice as the saltine s'mores were, they were a little more taste. These are a little more tasty. He helps you take uh, your toasted marshmallow from the fire and assembles your s'more. You take a bite. Mm. Like it? Uh, love it. <laughs> My favorite dinner and dessert. How could I not? I'm not done yet. Here's one more thing I planned. Another surprise? This is too much. For you, there's uh, no such thing as too much. Dean pulls his shirt over his head. Oh, snap. Oh, shit, it's getting hot. And he drops it to the sand. He steps out into the rowboat and begins pushing it back into the water and the light of the flames rippling over his, the power of his back. Whew. Once it's floating a couple feet out, he gestures to you to join him. He holds out his hand and you take it and you climb into the boat. At this touch, you feel his heat against your palm. Ooh, that bod, though. Ooh, that tattoo, though. Ooh. Ooh. Why is he hot? No, no, stop it. I'm engaged, guy, dude. I'm engaged to a prince. Prince of Cordenia, damn it. I don't... Out here is one of the best processes to see the stars. He leans back to admire the sky for a moment. Oh, it's so beautiful, though. As you lower your gaze, you find yourself noticing that tot of large muscles in his arms and get each rose of his oars. What's your favorite thing about the stars? Ah, uh, the stars? My horoscope said that a handsome man would sweep me off my feet tonight. The stars? I love finding constellations I know almost every one. They're pretty, but I can't find the Big Dipper. I like finding constellations. I know them. Me too. P uh, Perseus has always been my favorite. Does, uh, does him being a Greek hero who battles evil have anything to do with that? 
It might have been the reason eight-year-old me was so fascinated with him. You certainly know your astronomy. When I was a kid, my dad told me that everyone was connected by the stars. While he was uh, deployed, I would look up at the sky and know I was seeing the same constellations as him. Sometimes I've even talked to the stars, and for a second, it felt like he was right there next to me. It made me feel close to him, even when he was half a world away. That's really fucking beautiful, Dean! You and Dean look up, marveling at the vastness of the universe above you. Oh my god, that's so nice! Oh my god, there's gonna be a shooting star, isn't there? Sarah, do you ever think about the future? Yes, but I want to live spontaneously. Yes, I have everything planned out. Yes, but I don't know what I want. Um, I want to live life spontaneously, but I don't know what I want. Um, I mean, me personally, I have everything planned out, but I do would like to live spontaneously. I always enjoyed living in the moment and with Dick. I was never able to do that. Now I have that chance. I don't know what the future holds, but I know I want to spend mine with you. Dean reaches forward and takes your, your hand in his. Oh god. Oh my god. Huh. Whatever you want. Whenever you want to be. All I want is to be there beside you and holding your hand. Oh my god. What is he doing? No! Dean, what are you doing? Like over your hands and he reaches into a bag of his- Oh god, and he pulls out a ring! Oh my god! It's so cute! It's so- I mean, it's not pretty! Oh my god, what's going on? Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! You reach out and touch the ring, lightly tracing the gold braid- I don't even know this guy that well! Holy shit, what is wrong? And the band with your fingers. Oh my god! I want to build a life with you, Sarah. One we call our own. You're strong, adventurous, playful, and unbelievably kind. And you're you're my best friend and the partner I knew I was missing. I barely know this guy. I'm, oh my god. I know we've been through a lot this summer and I'm here for you. In whatever way you need, your happiness will always come first. If you'll have me, I'll spend every day of my rest of my life showing you how much I love- Oh my god, this is such a beautiful proposal, but oh my god. Dean, you trail off words escaping you. I don't- you don't need to answer now. I know this is a big decision and you deserve more time to think about it. This is the same thing that my prince said to me. And I meant what I said. You're the best thing I've ever happened to me. I've never felt like this about anyone before. Dean, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm just so overwhelmed right now. Let's just focus on tonight and forget about the future for now. Uh, these are all horrible. <laughs> you're the best thing- I'm not gonna say that- I barely know this guy. I'm just so overwhelmed right now. Let's just focus on tonight and forget about the future for now. I kind of want to say that, but that sounds like... Let's fuck. Um, I'm so overwhelmed right now. Everything with Dick and the inheritance, it's not how I imagined the summer going. I feel so confused. Hopefully, my mind will be clear by the gala. As Dean slips the ring back into his bag, you realize... Uh, release the breath you didn't realize you were holding. The gala is... Uh, all anyone's at work's been talking about. Are you excited to go? The gala is, um, sounds amazing. Nicole hinted how beautiful the venue is going to be. I'll try to save at least one dance for you. Can't wait to spend more time with you. I'll try to save one dance for you. I'll take whatever I can get. There's one last thing I want to show you, but you'll have to get a little wet. Something that you can only find underwater in a few places in the world. It's, let me guess, I'm gonna assume it's an oyster and a pearl. Any, any surprise? It'll be worth it, I promise. What do you say? No, you already got me a gold ring. I don't want to do it. I guess it's a little late for a swim. Yeah, there are sharks in here, man. There are sharks that swim at night. That is a stupid thing. You are a stupid man. I'm kidding. You're, you're stupid, but you're sexy. I, I actually kind of- I was so close to, like, really having feelings for you, but I'm already with a prince. Sorry. It's true love, damn it! Besides, I don't want my siblings spending the coast guard- sending the coast guard after me. I'd hate to get in trouble with them when it comes to protecting you. They'll be happy to hear you say that. Dean takes uh, the hold of his oars and begins to rowing back to the ship. Comfortable silence settles between the two of you as you lean back, gazing up at the blanket of stars above you. Is the night of the gala approaches, will Sarah say yes to Dean's proposal? And will Joe and Elena be able to save the law firm? Keep playing to find out! You know what's interesting? So... Dean's proposed to me, my Prince Jay proposed to me, Will has not proposed to me, 
but that's probably because you know i don't i haven't really made an effort to spend time with him because he's boring he's boring as fuck but um yeah that ring was really pretty like ah uh, dean's actually really sweet and cute and i was kind of close to saying yes but i i, I can't I'm, I'm already engaged to a prince i can't do that but yeah, um, if you guys enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and comment your thoughts and feelings and wonderfulness of my awesomeness. And please, you know, join me on the forums on Facebook to talk about all the wonderful stuff we do here on Choices. And I will see you guys later. Be kind to one another. Don't text and drive. Love you guys. Bye-bye.